Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be covering this really cool laser reveal effect. So if you guys have ever seen in a movie where someone gets their face scanned, this is basically the effect we're going to be doing. Um, there's a few different ways we can go about doing this, but as, as you can see, I kind of built out the little prototype here. So as you can see, our laser kind of goes upwards towards our mop, towards the top of our model's head and kind of reveals like the wireframe underneath. So this is actually really simple to do. I was messing around with some different ways we could do this. And then after the face is fully revealed, there's actually a second level of detail that's gonna come in from the top here. Um, and we're gonna have a second laser coming down to reveal that second half as well. So as you can see, if I play this out, you can see the second half getting fully revealed. This is the first part. And then the second part is gonna be that, um, that full layer of detail. So let's go ahead and hop right into the tutorial. I'm gonna to go to File, New, General. I'm gonna go ahead and save this one. Um, and we're just gonna do everything in Eevee and then head over to Cycles when we're done. So I'm gonna start off by deleting the cube and the light um, and the camera. So I'm gonna start completely from scratch here and I'm gonna call this Laser Reveal. And we're gonna go ahead and save that. And again, this file will be completely available on my Patreon. I'm gonna start off by adding something like a monkey. So the reason I'm gonna add the monkey, and I'm gonna rotate that on the Z axis, 90 degrees, is because I want us to start with something that everyone has in Blender. I'm gonna go ahead and add a subdivision surface to this, two levels, and I'm going to shade that auto smooth. So, so far we have our subject. You guys can use any subject, this works with anything. Um, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna duplicate this, okay? And this one, we're gonna call this, in the hierarchy, I'm gonna call this wireframe one and then what i'm going to do you guessed it is i'm going to add a wireframe so right now i don't really like this thickness so i'm going to turn the thickness down quite a bit that looks pretty much perfect so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to take this wireframe and we're going to reveal it so basically the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a boolean so i'm going to go ahead and add a mesh cube and i'm going to scale it larger than my than uh suzanne here i'm going to go into x-ray mode so we can see what's going on what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring the I'm going to bring the cube right about here, okay? So it's like right at the bottom. I'm going to keyframe the location, insert location, head over to frame 60, and I'm going to move this all the way up to above her head. So as you guys can see, when I play this back, we have this, um, this revealing motion. Now what we need to do is we need to hide the cube, click on our wireframe, and then we need to add a Boolean modifier. All right, so let's go to Boolean. And then we're gonna select our cube. So now as you guys can see, when I play this back, we have a reveal of this wireframe. Now one thing I wanna do here is for my subdivisions, I'm actually gonna turn those down to one. And as you guys can see, we ha now have a wireframe reveal of our subject here. Now this is fantastic, this is what we want. Now let's go ahead and head over to render view. Now you're not gonna really see much right here and that is because we don't have any materials. So let me go ahead and add an emissive shader to our, um, to our wireframe here and I'm just gonna make this red. You guys can make this whatever color you want. I'm just doing red because I think it looks the best. And of course we're in Eevee right now so I'll just enable bloom so we can kind of tell what's glowing and what's not. And we're gonna need to turn this strength up to like 10 so we can really see that glow. So this looks fantastic. So far we have our reveal, right? But we're missing something. We're missing our laser. Now if you get weird glitches like this, um, just check your Boolean operator. But what we wanna do is we wanna add in a light source. So let's go ahead and add in an area light, go to our side view, and let's rotate it towards Suzanne here. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna parent this light source to our, um, to our Boolean. But before we do this, we're not gonna be able to really see this in Eevee, so I'm gonna switch over to Cycles, GPU. I'm gonna select my area light and I'm gonna make my spread one. So the reason we're doing this is now we have this very sharp line. Now instead of the shape being square, I'm gonna change that to rectangle and I'm gonna go ahead and make this very, very long and very thin on the Z axis. So now what we can do is we can animate this up and down. Now for the color, I'm gonna choose something like red, of course, and then for the power, I'll do like 50. I think that looks perfect because then you have this nice white glow in the middle and it just looks fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead back to frame one, go to my solid view. I'm gonna turn my cube back on so I can kind of see where it is. And I'm gonna pick a point where I can kind of tell what's going on here. I am going to move the light right below our cube, just like this, and I'm going to shift click the cube and I'm gonna parent the, um, the light to the cube. Now I'm going to hide the cube again 
Go to rendered view. Now, as you can see, our laser light travels with our Boolean. So it looks like we're getting a scan of the wireframe of this object. Now, what I'm gonna do, as you guys can see, the wireframe is gonna disappear every now and then. If that happens, uh, click on your Boolean type and click on fast instead of exact. That usually fixes it. So yeah, we should be good to go there. So now, as you guys can see, we have a full face scan just like that. Now, I'm gonna take it a couple steps further. We're also going to scan one more time in the downwards direction. So I'm gonna go back to solid view, head over to random so we can kind of see the difference between what we're working with here. I am going to click on my wireframe, duplicate that, right, shift D to duplicate. I'm gonna call this wireframe two. I'm gonna give this one two subdivisions, okay? So now you can see we have two separate wireframes. I'm gonna turn the first one off so we don't get confused here. And I'm also going to get rid of the Boolean. So now we have a wireframe that is a higher density. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a second reveal in the downwards motion. So we're gonna need a separate cube for that, for the Boolean object, scale your cube up, go to, um, sorry, X-ray mode. Now we're gonna move our cube right here, I'm sorry, right here so that the top of the cube is right where the top of the wireframe is. Now at this point, we wanna do a second scan once the first one's done. So we'll head to frame 60 and we'll insert a keyframe on that location, head over to frame 120, move this all the way down, insert the location. Where is that location? Cool. And now we can see that this moves down and now we just need to hide this cube. We need to click on our higher density wireframe and we need to add a Boolean operator and add that for cube two. And as you guys can see, we now, and we want to switch this to fast as well. As you guys can see, we're getting a few issues, so be careful. Um, and the reason we're probably getting that is, or actually, I'm gonna pull my Boolean up here. Let's see if that helps. All right, so we're gonna have a few slight issues, so be careful uh, where you put this Boolean. I'm gonna try to put it, there we go. Okay, so if you put the Boolean after the subdivision, it seems to work fine. So as you guys can see, we now have our second reveal. And if we turn our first wireframe back on, you'll notice that we're now revealing this second layer of detail. So I'm gonna go back to rendered view. And this looks really, really sharp. And again, you guys can adjust the thickness of your wireframe. I think I might make mine a little bit thinner on both sides. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit thinner. But again, you're getting that second level of detail. So if I play this back, this looks really, really good. Um, you might get a few strange glitches with your Boolean, but this overall does look really good. Now we're only missing one thing, guys. We need that second light as well. So I'm gonna go back to solid view, go to my front facing view here. I'm gonna duplicate this light source and then I'm gonna right click on it and go to parent and I'm gonna do clear parent and keep transform. Then I'm going to reveal my second cube I'm going to move this to the top of our cube, right? And then I'm gonna shift click our cube, control P to parent to that cube, hide our cube again. And now we should have our second light source coming down to reveal our second layer. I know that might've been hard to follow, but again, if you guys do support me on Patreon, you will have full access to this file. So again, we're getting our second layer revealing right now, and this just looks fantastic. Now, we haven't even gotten into any details in terms of materials and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more to our scene. I'm gonna add in a floor plane here, scale that up, bring it below Suzanne here. I'm gonna go to solid view, tab into edit mode. I'm gonna select this edge, extrude it on the Z axis. I'm gonna also select that same edge, control B to bevel, scroll to add some subdivisions there, and then tab out of edit mode, shade that smooth. Now let's give ourselves a nice little environment texture here. I'm gonna head over to my HDRI folder and I'm gonna add this nighttime HDRI. That looks awesome. And then I'm gonna add in a camera into our scene. Let's add our camera, snap to camera view. And let's go ahead and position our camera with an 85 millimeter lens. All right, and let's also position it facing Suzanne a little bit more. Give ourselves a nice 90 degree angle here. Let's back up on the X axis and let's scale our floor plane out so we have a nice background here. I'm also going to make our floor plane something a little bit darker. That looks much better. Now you'll see these lines back here. We can modify this so that we don't see those lines. Um, there is ways to do that, but right now I'm a little bit more focused on the actual scan itself. 
So let's go ahead and just play this back and see how this looks. So you can see, we can see both lights here. Um, again, like I said, if we don't want to see those, we can always try to take the camera and enable some depth of field here. So I'm actually going to do that anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and give this like a depth of field of maybe one. As you can see, we have that first scan and it looks really good. I'm also going to give Suzanne like a nice darker color, something like that with a high roughness value. That looks pretty good. Again, you guys can do whatever you prefer for this step. But again, I just thought this laser was just so awesome. Um, it just, I don't know, this, this reveal effect was just so cool. I couldn't help but create it. Again, we have the first reveal and then the second reveal. You're going to get a few weird glitches. Um, so like right here, I was getting a weird glitch with my Boolean. So I'm going to go ahead and select my second wireframe and take a look. I'm going to click, I'm going to choose fast for the Boolean operator for everything that seems to fix it just fine. And again, we have that second reveal right there. And I just think this looks fantastic. This effect is just it's amazing. Um, and you can do this with any object. Let me go ahead and narrow in on my viewport display here. That looks good. Now, the only thing left really, guys, is to figure out what we want to do with these lines back here. Um, and I think in order to fix that, I'm either going to just get rid of this plane altogether. Um, or what I'll do is I will use a background plane. Here, let's do this. Let's add another plane in, scale it up a lot, rotate it 90. And maybe we just bring it back so far that... Um, that it's not seen it's not seeing these lights here hold on a second i'm gonna bring it back like really really far that might work yeah so as long as you guys bring it to a certain point on the x-axis you won't see those lasers anymore yeah so now as you guys can see i have the the plane way way far back and then i'm going to just go ahead and give this a black uh, shader again there's other ways to get rid of that effect or get rid of those lines on there but this was the effect I was going for, basically like a laser reveal. And it looks really, really clean. And then you have our second level right there. Now you guys can go another level if you want. Just keep in mind, as you add more modifiers, it's going to slow down your render. All right, let's go ahead and get into some actual rendering details here. So right now we are in cycles, GPU enabled, max samples, I'm gonna do 150. And then for denoising, we'll do optics. Um, and then we're going to add some bloom, quote unquote bloom in the compositor. I'm going to head over to the compositing tab, click on use nodes, and you're going to get these two nodes by default. I am going to separate them, add in a glare node type. We're going to do fog glow for now. We'll keep it all medium and we're going to render one frame and test how this glow looks. And we're going to add in a viewer node and we're going to plug in our image output from the glare to our viewer. Now you're not going to see anything because we haven't rendered anything yet. Let me go back to the layout. Let's go ahead and F12 to render this. And now, as you guys can see, there's a bunch of cubes. And that is because we have to hide our Booleans from the render. So make sure you click off of those uh, render properties there. And now, as you guys can see, it's going to take about five seconds. And there is your final result. And actually, I do like that glare effect right there. You guys can adjust that to whatever you like. If you really zoom in, you can notice some noise here. We're only doing 150 samples for this example, but you guys can go ahead and render this at any quality you want. Right now, we're at 1920 by 1080, which is a full HD size, but this just looks really good. Um, again, we haven't even gotten into any materials or anything like that. And keep in mind, guys, you can modify this in any way you see fit. You can have the scan go from top to bottom, left to right, up and down. Um, you could even have it start in the center and go outwards. And another level of complexity you could add is with your actual cube, this object that is revealing the laser, you could add some displacement to that as well, which will further create um, a more interesting effect with those lasers. Now, there's just one more thing I wanted to add to this, and that is um, the build modifier. If you guys do decide you want to add one more layer of random movement to this laser reveal, you could actually add the build modifier. Let me go ahead and put that at the top there. Now, right now, if I click randomize, this is what this effect will look like. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is not the same effect. So you're not going to get that same laser reveal effect. But if this is what you're looking for, this is another way to spice this up. You can also click on non-randomized, which is going to give you this effect. So again, guys, I'm just trying to show you different opportunities of how you can piece this together. I don't like the build modifier result, so I'm going to take that off. Excuse me, make sure you just X out of that. Perfect. So again, this is the final result. We have our reveal. 
It looks fantastic. Again, the other thing I would probably enable is motion blur, but I do think that this result came out really, really nicely. Um, yeah, this is just, this is perfect. So this was exactly what I was looking for. And if you guys want to take it even one more step further, you can make a little scanning machine on the left here or on the right, whatever you guys want to do. I think this result is fantastic. I think I might add a little bit of metallic, uh, like a metallic shader to this. I might even make this chrome. I just want to see what this would look like if it was a little bit more chrome. Again, you guys can make this whatever you want. I might even make this uh, a material from my favorite material pack, which is Ducky 3D's Real-Time Materials, as you guys have heard me mention before. I really do love that pack. It just looks fantastic. Um, and I think um, for our main subject here, I'm going to add one more level of subdivision there. It just is going to add a little bit of extra quality to our render. Um, and then I'll just mess with the, with the actual subject itself a little bit more. Maybe raise that roughness just a little bit. I think that's perfect. I think this thing is ready to render. Um, I'll render this out and I'll post the actual result on my Instagram, as you guys know. Uh, but this is pretty much it, guys. That is the tutorial. That is a laser reveal up and then back down with that second level. It just looks so good. Imagine doing this with a photo scanned version of your, maybe your face, or you could even, you could potentially map this to. Um, you know, some motion tracking. There's a lot you can do with this. I mean, this effect is super simple because you're really just taking the wireframe and you're revealing it with a Boolean, applying an emissive shader to it, and then you're taking this laser, um, this laser light that we've created with a an area light and just following that Boolean. So yeah, this is really cool. Of course, this is my favorite part right here, this first part. It just looks so good. Um, and you guys can use any frame rate you want. So if you want it to be a really quick scan like that, you can go ahead and raise that frame rate. Now, one thing I actually want to point out before I head off here, guys, this wireframe, you'll notice it's it's not quite peeking through on some edges. What's great is since this is just a modifier, we can actually adjust that. You'll notice it's not coming through the skull part of Suzanne right here. So you can change this offset value. Um, you can raise that and then maybe raise the thickness just enough so that it's coming through. Again, totally up to you. You don't have to do that, but That'll, that'll further increase the, um, the visibility of that wireframe being revealed. So guys, that is the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok. Check out the Discord. I have my Patreon where this file will be available. Um, that's the second tier. And you'll have access to, I think it's like over 100 different folders worth of tutorials. Um, there's a lot going on there with the, with the Patreon. We have a, quite a few supporters on there right now, which is fantastic. Um, and then let's see what other platforms do we have. Um, those are the main ones. I mostly post on Instagram, so go ahead and follow me there. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you in the next tutorial.